All right, happy Wednesday, fam. In today's video, we're going to be walking through Bitcoin, taking a look at the macro count, and then diving into the smaller time frame and working through this correction here. This is this type of correction is where the majority of traders and investors give back their profits, or worse, they take on losses in this territory here. And so it gets pretty tricky to navigate it if you're not comfortable with corrective structures. And a lot of people get shaken out in time as well. A key to navigating these areas successfully is to allow some flexibility in the market and be patient. And it's worth being patient when you understand the bigger picture here on Bitcoin. And that is a macro impulse wave towards the upside. And we're simply just consolidating above previous all-time highs, which is an extremely bullish sign, in fact. So there's always ex expected sell pressure to come in of profit-taking when we come over those previous all-time highs. And the fact that we're flipping those previous highs to support as it stands right now is a clear sign that we have high probability for continued upside here. If you take a look at how we reacted back when we broke the all-time highs of 2017 in this 17 to 20K level here, we had a 30% pullback that occurred here before completely skyrocketing towards the upside. And this would be the area where a lot of people continue to get washed out, wicked out as well. They may become impatient. As this consolidation period here took about 20 days of not a whole lot of stuff going on altogether. There's one thing that's slightly different about each of these bull markets is that they've consecutively taken longer in time each time. So 2017 was a really fast bull market. 2021 was a little bit longer. And it's expected that 2024 will be even longer than 2021, which in fact it already has in this regards where we're at in time right now has already surpassed the length of time from March 9th all the way up to April 11th. And if you want to take the ultimate all-time high that actually came into play over here after a 50% correction, then this would be 605 days that our bull market lasted, and we're at 502 days as it stands right now. So we're not even longer if you go from the high up here at about 67K or so. I consider the bull market done back here when we hit the uh, 64K high in this territory here, because I'm not going to sit through a 50% correction. Uh, I'll take these 30% pullbacks max in bull runs across the board. And so from an Elliott Wave standpoint, this rally here ended up being a expanded B wave for an expanded flat bear market altogether. So when we understand the bigger picture here, it allows us to be a little bit more patient and allows us to be a little bit more flexible in here. If we're tightening up stop losses too tight, we're going to get wicked out quite a bit. And if you're comfortable with that from a trading standpoint, in order to get tighter risk to reward ratio trades, then there's an argument to be made that that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But for most people, especially a little bit more swing trader individuals, it sucks to get wicked out here and then have price end up going higher. And the type of corrections that we see take place in bull markets are known as running flats, where we make higher highs and higher lows. And as we go down to the smaller time frame, that's going to be my bias here altogether, is going to be this running flat type of correction. It's a little bit easier to see down here on a 16-hour time frame. And when we talked about this on Monday, we talked about the 0.618 level here being the primary area that we want to stay above for this bullish count to stay into place here. So this takes place at 64,935. So I don't want to see price draw down underneath this zone here. But as we go into the smaller time frame here, you're going to see that I'd allow one more sweep of the low just a little bit, but the buy up needs to be pretty quick altogether. So right now we're in this pivot area where I'm looking at buy opportunities to catch this move towards the upside where I think we'll actually go up and break a new high. Something I posted inside of our free Discord channel that you can join over at discord.tradethewave.com, links can be down in the description below, was the comparison in regards to our current rally versus the rally in 2021 when we broke the 2017 all-time high. And the price action is almost identical. It's how we've been having such great success in calling these running flat type of corrections where it's going to be higher highs and higher lows. And when you have high probability of getting that type of a correction, then you know how to navigate it. And the same thing I'm going to argue is taking place here with Bitcoin as well. Now, it gets a little bit sketchy when we're down here at our support zone. And the wave structure in which we approached it can easily bleed through to a new low here and give us what's known as a market structure break. Even if that were to be the case, and we'll talk about that was dropped down into a four hour time frame here. If we were to bleed through here and come and sweep these lows down here at 60,715, we would have and look for the next target to be 
$59,167. So it'd really still just be, it'd still protect these wicks back here and give us more of that double bottom reversal while taking the liquidity underneath this subwave low right here. In addition to us coming back down to this 59k level would be that it matches up with our 0.382 level pretty nicely as well which lies at sixty thousand two hundred eleven dollars and if i flip over to log scale which you can find down in this bottom tab here between linear and log we get the 382 to fall at 57,911. And why the 0.382 level is important when I pull it from this low pivot here to this top one here is because this is the most common area for a fourth wave correction to pull back to. And this is the type of correction that we're in right now is a fourth wave. A fourth waves love to be complex structures. And in bull markets, they love to be running flat. So I'm going to place my bet on this move here. And I'm currently in a long in this territory here for this move towards the upside. And I'll show you that trade setup on the smaller time frame to try and capitalize on this as well. As always though, it's not financial advice, it's just my perspective on the market and sharing that with you guys as this is the application of the new wave system. And if you wanna learn how to navigate this system yourselves and navigate the markets from this perspective, then I've put together a free training on the new wave system that breaks down the four components that are the most effective at creating trading systems. So it's how I created my trading system and you could use these four components to create your own trading system as well. Or you could simply decide to leverage mine after going through the training. But either way, you're going to get a ton of value out of that training and you can register for that at tradethewave.com. So since we understand the bigger picture here and why we're consolidating sideways and that we're just in a macro correction altogether and that we're very likely to continue seeing more upside in this bull market altogether, at least for the rest of 2024, I would say that we'll probably top out in Q1 of 2025 is my projections as it stands right now that can always change as more data comes into the market. So I'm going to squeeze down here to the four hour time frame right now. And this is actually even better seen on the one hour time frame where we start to create that reversal divergence down here between these lows. Now the bounce up is subpar and fairly weak as it stands right now. It's not the greatest bounce altogether, but we are consolidating sideways, which is better than seeing a hard rejection off of this level altogether to sweep these lows again at $64,500. And I'll show you a very, very tight trade setup to capitalize on this move up to $76,129 that I think price is going to be able to move to here. And that's best seen down on the 15 minute time frame. So this trade setup just presented itself off of this pump up right here because as it was standing with this rejection down, we had a fair argument that this might end up connecting downwards as a ending diagonal. This is what that count would have looked like on how we would have swept the lows again. And this would have been the last drawdown that I would have allowed. And we would have seen this move and break towards the upside again. When I talked with you guys on Monday, the trade setup that I shared all together was a long position as we drew down in this area where stops were underneath the previous low down here at $62,191. And we look for this to break up. This type of stop loss percent of about 4% allows the flexibility that we need for these to create these bottoming structures down here, where we wick the, the bottoms a couple of times, create some lows, start to build that reversal divergence that attracts traders and convinces them that the market's going to move towards the upside and gets them to pile in with market orders. This is what ultimately ends up moving the price towards the upside here. So this stop loss allows for us to kind of pivot around this area and have it get choppy and sloppy. As we zoom down here into this smaller time frame altogether, when I go back down to the 15 minutes, I would argue that because we've swept back up on this top side here, we should not come back down underneath $65,840. And so that allows us a trade setup in this territory here that looks like this. Now, this is a little bit tight for a stop loss here. And if we wanted to allow a little bit more flexibility, our stronger invalidation level is going to be 65,484. And the reason for this, if I get rid of the ending diagonal here, is that this move taking place is our, could be a B wave where, of a expanded or a running flat. So if I go A, B, C in this territory here, or this B wave gets a little bit higher, I can still come back down to this A wave low. So if I have my stop up here, that's just a little bit tight, especially if it's an overnight trade. You don't want to be sleeping when this gets wicked out and then price moves on. So the stronger invalidation is going to be at $65,465. And so I just wanted to break down and have you understand how this can 
can still move to the right a little bit from a corrective standpoint. The risk reward ratio is going to be extremely good when we zoom out here with this invalidation level. And it's going to give us a 12 and a half to one risk reward ratio, meaning that if I'm willing to lose $100 on this trade, which has a 1% stop loss to it, which means that I need to have a $10,000 account, 1% of $10,000 is 100 bucks. Therefore, if I'm willing to risk losing $100 on this trade, I could make $1,258. Overall, on a $10,000 account, you'd be looking at about a 12 and a half percent account growth in a single trade trade like this. This is where it's nice to get those tighter stops here. But the risk to tighter stops like this is that it's harder pre to predict the market because you're not allowing a lot of flexibility like you are in this bigger trade over here. Which means that if you try to do these types of trades over here, every time we pivot, you would have been wrong two times in this territory here. Now that's okay, because the risk reward ratio makes sense for it, right? If you're going to lose two times and then you'll know it the third time that means that you've lost 200 bucks on with a ten thousand dollar account here but you're going to still make 1258 bucks minus the 200 means that you're going to have a 10 percent of account growth from this single trade even though it took you three times in order to get it right whereas this larger trade here is going to offer you a four to one risk reward ratio meaning that if you risk a hundred dollars on it you're going to end up making $400. That's a 4% growth on account size altogether. Also still very healthy and something to be proud of, but you can see how allowing more flexibility in the market decreases your profits overall. This is worth doing though, if you always end up sucking at this or worse yet, you take two trades, you lose. And therefore, because of the outcome of your last two trades, you don't take your third, fourth or fifth attempts. As such, you always end up missing out on the proper move that you should be taking because you're letting emotions get in the way. In that case, this would not be the right trading style for you. And you'd be better off allowing more flexibility in the market. This is also something to take into consideration i.e. your work hours that you have or family time and so forth. Allowing more flexibility in the market means that you don't have to be paying attention to the charts as frequently. You don't have to be as stressed out. You don't have to micromanage things as much. And there's a lot of benefits to it. In fact, some people don't have the option to trade like this because they have jobs. And so they need to allow more flexibility in the market altogether. Now, before I sign off here, I think that there's a lot of opportunity that's going to be presenting itself in altcoins in this bull cycle altogether. And if you're coming into this market brand new or just now looking to purchase crypto in April, there are some coins that have already ran that you want to stay away from. And there are others that are still primed for some really good entries. A couple of those I've shared on this channel here, such as HNT that I'll do an update on Friday about, or you can come join us in the Discord channel and I've got more updates in there. But what I want to share is an altcoin portfolio that I've put together for 2024 that I believe will produce really, really good results and has coins in it anywhere from 10xing to 100xing, allowing for really good diversification of across about 30 coins that fall in different sectors as well and different risk tolerances. Some that are more blue chip and larger capped coins and some that are very low cap coins, higher risk, but higher reward opportunities. And if you'd like to get access to this for free, then I'd like you to comment altcoin down in the comments below this video, and I will reply with sending you that link. Other than that, I'd like to just give a quick summary and reminder to allow for some chop down here around this 0.618 level, that this is ultimately our buy territory and interest area right now. And we're looking for this to pivot up towards the top side at 76,244. Across the board, some alts are looking strong, others are looking weak. And there's certainly money migration happening across different sectors in the market. And technical analysis is going to be the edge that you can have looking at these charts in order to create better timing and cycling of taking profits and putting them over into something else primed to increase in price. If you want to stay up to date with those, then definitely follow the channel here. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell as well. We put out videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Monday at 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, we go live every single Monday. So you can come and join us there where you can be able to ask questions and get better clarity on the markets with Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the US dollar. And I highly recommend coming over and following over on my Instagram channel as well, where I share some serious alpha that I don't share on other platforms, such as coins that I think will 10 to 100x, all coins that are waking up from an analysis standpoint, summaries of important trading books that you should be checking out, and so much more. So definitely come on over and 
follow over on Instagram if you're not following already. And then I would do the same with Twitter as well, or X, if you want to call it that, just because it's so easy for me to post charts over on X. So from trading view so if you don't want to join us inside of the discord that's an easy way to stay updated with this as well although i do provide a lot more inside of the free discord channels i'll leave it at that thanks so much for your time today guys much love and take care fam